Ethernet car. We went a little nutty and we put one of each in here. Like Leo says, you're going to line up the car with the slot. You're going to press it in. I like to give them an extra tap at the back to make sure it's firmly seated. You don't want to leave any of those threads or the, the pins exposed on there. Make sure everything's good and solid in there. Make sure it's tightened down and you're ready to move on to the next step. Boy, we loaded up this uh, machine, didn't we? Okay, yeah. my sound card, like yours, is going to be the last PCI slot. I also have a modem and a network card. Mm. We are just wacky today. And I'm going <laughs> to slide mine in here. And there we go. All right, I've got one opening. Uh, that I uh, am not using, so I'm going to push this back in to fill it up so that it doesn't uh, occupy, uh, that I don't leave any uh, any holes in there. But we're done. We're going to screw, screw these things down and uh, make sure they're solidly in there. And uh, we've installed our additional cards. We've got everything installed to the case. Now, Except for the cable. It's time to attach the cables. Oh, That's boy. right. Lots and lots of cables. You know what? You're probably going to start with your data cables, and, and just for fun, you can start with your floppy drive cable. Where did that floppy drive cable go? I will look forward to the end of the floppy drive. Just it's because. pretty much gone already, you know. I mean, there's not a lot of things that use a floppy. The only thing, the only time you really are glad you have a floppy is when your machine won't start up, mm -hmm. and, and you've made a rescue disk. And you use that to boot up the machine so that you can figure out what's wrong and fix it, often reinstalling yeah. your operating system. So that's pretty much the last use of the floppy. Nobody uses, or very few people use floppies to transfer information anymore. That's right. just really not a common use. Uh, the zip has pretty much taken over for that. Did you put a zip drive in yours? Uh, I did not put a zip drive in mine. Yeah, I, like, I, I tell you, I like having a zip drive. And most of the computers that I build, I'll put a zip drive in. I just feel like it's a, a really useful thing to have. I don't uh, know. For a backup and for transfer of data from one machine to the other. What's the matter? Nine cents a CDR disk for 650 well, megabytes of you put storage a CD versus recorder 10 in there. bucks a disk for a All zip right. drive. All right, smart let's, man. let's take a look inside of this case. Your data cables are going to go. There's going to be one from the back of the hard drive, the floppy drive, the CDR drive, the DVD drive, and they're going to go into these. These two longer slots are your IDE slots, the shorter one right here is your slot for your floppy drive. Now, let's talk about cables for a second. Some cables are keyed. And when I say keyed, it's not like you're going to pull out your house keys and unlock <laughs> it and put it back in together. Well, it's kind of like that, though. It's kind of like that. Take a look at this. These are the two ends of the floppy drive cable. Here's the first thing. There's Sometimes there's a little block here on the top. That's actually going to align with a particular side of that, that cable socket that you put it into. You also notice there's a blank pin there. Instead of being able to put a pin in there, it's covered up. That means it's only going to go in there one way. The other end's a little more complicated. This one actually, it's, there's no blocked pins in here. There's no little slot for it. But what you do know one end from the other by looking at this, this little red cable on here. You're going to align that up with the floppy drive. Now, let's, let's talk about for the rest of the cables in your system, your IDE drives, all of your hard drives. If you look at the back end of your hard drive, and you know, we should have left a hard drive out just to talk about this. You've got a hard drive here. You've got two things going on. Right here, the most back of most of your drives, there's going to be a slot for the IDE cable. Now, we talked about there being a little notch or a missing pin that helps you align it. But you know what really helps you align it? This, this four-point Molex connector where your power goes. And when you're putting these in, I have what they call rounded cables. These are the slick high-end ones. But you notice something. Even on the slick high-end cut ones, one side of this has a little red uh, line on it right here. You see that little red line there? That is always going to be facing that power connector. So when I'm st installing these, we keep the little red pin on the side with the power connector. And that also lines up. In this case, there happens to be a slot there, too. And that makes it real easy. You don't have to remember which way it goes on. Now, I've got a kind of a special problem here. You might have this problem, too. Most CD uh, ROM drives have a third connector besides the power cable and the IDE connector. Mm -hmm. They have an audio connector. Oh, boy. This is going to go from the audio connector on the CD mm -hmm. to the sound card. And it's so we can listen to audio CDs, the audio that's played back from the audio CD just gets sent right to the sound card without the computer intervening in the middle. So that is going to go on the far edge. I usually put that in first on the CD because it's so far away from me. I want to put it in before I put in the other cables. You're not going to really be able to see me do this because it's so <laughs> deeply buried within that computer there. And I'm going to slide this yeah. right in there and connect it then. Now that I've got it connected there and you can see this, I'm going to connect it to the sound card. There's mm -hmm. a logical place to put it. The sound card is labeled 
so that you can, you, it'll say CD audio in, and there it is right there. I'm gonna stick it right in there. And this little wire is just gonna sit there in the middle of your case, getting in your way, but you need it if you wanna listen right. to audio CDs on the, uh, on the system. Now, we have a variety of different cables here. Darcy went out and she went crazy. She bought us rounded cables. She bought us flat ribbon cables. We've got UDMA 33, UDMA 66, UDA 1, MA 100 cables. Could also be ATA 33, ATA 66, <laughs> ATA what? 100. What do I use, you might ask? <laughs> well, the rounded cables are a finesse just to make it look pretty inside and to keep airflow. I don't actually like to use rounded cables. I'm of the opinion ribbon cables are ribbon cables for a reason. They give you better separation and shielding of the signals. So I use ribbon cables. If you want to use rounded cables, you go right ahead. If you have an ATA66 drive, you have to use these special ATA66 cables. And you, if you look closely, this, this, the dark gray one is an ATA66 cable. It has twice as many wires in it as the ATA33 cable. Since we have ATA66 drives, that's the cable I'm gonna use to attach it. You'll notice the cables are color-coded, and that's for a reason. The blue end of the cable here, that's gonna go to the motherboard, and these other two are for attaching to the drives. So these cables have gotten a little bit fancier than the old IDE cables. Mm -hmm. We now have to attach the blue directly to the motherboard. It is keyed, just as Patrick said, so you can't put it in wrong and then one of these is gonna to go to my hard drive. I don't have two drives on this IDE chain. As I mentioned, every motherboard these days has two IDE uh, connectors, each of which can handle two devices for a total of four IDE devices, hard drives, CDs, zip drives. In my case, I only have two IDE devices, a hard drive and a CD-ROM. And in order to make my machine more efficient, I'm gonna put the hard drive on this cable and I'm gonna put the CD-ROM, which is a, a ATA33 device, on this cable and they won't share IDE chains. That gives me better performance. I'm putting it right in and that's gonna go to my hard drive. And then, isn't it nice when, when you do this before you've put in a lot of stuff? makes it very easy to add these cables. Uh, where's the challenge in not there's having all this no stuff challenge. in there? This is the old style uh, ATA33 or UDMA33 uh, cable, and it doesn't uh, matter which end you put uh, in which uh, side. So uh, I usually put the one that has the longest length. Uh, this one will go on the motherboard, and then these two closer together ones will go to the uh, drives themselves. This is gonna go to my CD-ROM, which is the slower uh, ATA33 specification. Put that right in there. If you don't have keyed cables, as Patrick mentioned, the red line on the cable is the number one wire that should go to the number one pin of the connector. Now, this is one of those areas where you get fancy when you're rounding the cables from one end of the system to the other. Remember, no sharp bends, no sharp breaks, don't time in the knots, just be gentle. You can't fold them over flat to change directions, but try to do it once. The floppy cables look very different than the IDE cables. The connectors are smaller, as Patrick observed, and uh, there really is only, uh, you know, they can't fit into the other cables. Um, one thing to note with floppy cables, and Patrick got burned on this on that Build Your Own PC Challenge, mm -hmm. normally on the floppy cable, the red wire goes closest to the power supply, and that's true on all drives. The red wire, the number one wire, is closest to the power supply, but not always. Patrick found a floppy drive that was the other way around, and that's what kept you from winning that race, isn't it? It made me a little bitter. They little tricked bitter you. Today. They tricked you. Patrick, for once, I'm finally beating you. I'm actually ready to put my uh, power cables on. Oh so while Patrick fiddles with his drives, moving it around so that he can get his stuff hooked up, we're going to show you how to hook up this stuff. These are all the power cables that come out of the power supply. And uh, most of them, there's really three different kinds. Uh, most of them look like this. These are the ones that are going to hook up to the hard drive and the CDs. There should be one that looks like that. That's the power supply cable that goes to the motherboard. And then there'll be one or two that look like this. These are for the floppy drives. Sometimes other devices use these kinds of power connectors, but typically hard drive, CD-ROM, floppy drive, and this is for the power supply. And then, by the way, my fans also uh, use them. In fact, just in case, I bought a couple of extra of these uh, connectors, these extra uh, uh, splitter connectors that Patrick was talking about so that I can make sure that all my fans are connected. So I'm going to put my motherboard, I'm going to wire it up. Now remember, this shouldn't be plugged in while you're doing this. I hope it hasn't <laughs> been plugged in all along. This especially is a time as we start to connect the power up to these devices, you want to make sure that nothing is connected. 
that you have discharged any static electricity. You've been doing that all along, I'm sure. And we're going to put this uh, power supply cable in. Only one way to do it. Only one way it'll fit. It's actually, you can't probably see it, but the, uh, the uh, connectors are shaped in such a way that they can only fit in.